Hi everyone, my name is Christian Chung and I'm a master's student in the Human Performance and Health Research Lab at the University of Guelph. Today I'll be talking about a recent study from our lab that explored the effects of ischemic preconditioning on cycling performance. Before we begin, we should address the question, what is ischemic preconditioning, or as we might call it, IPC? IPC is a technique that involves intentional, intermittent occlusion of blood flow to a limb using blood pressure cuffs. Typically, blood flow will be occluded for three sets of five minutes, with five minutes of rest in between sets. Numerous studies have shown that performing IPC prior to exercise can improve performance in a diverse range of performance tests. These findings suggest the possibility that IPC may be a safe and non-invasive way of improving performance in a number of different sports. It's important to note that the improvements in performance that have been associated with IPC are relatively small. Although many of these studies have shown only small improvements in performance, for many athletes, a difference of that size may be the difference between first and second place. One of the main questions raised with IPC is the idea that the performance benefits that have been associated with the technique are merely placebo effects. One challenge of administering IPC is that it is difficult to mask. It involves squeezing of the limbs, which creates a strong feeling of compression. It's also been shown that individuals' own performance expectations can substantially impact performance. These factors make it challenging to determine whether or not the benefits of IPC are simply placebo effects. However, if a deceptive sham is used and expectation is taken into account, we can attempt to determine the true effects of IPC on performance. So, how exactly do we do this? Well, we start by asking participants to visit the lab on three separate visits. On one visit, they underwent four sets of IPC over 40 minutes. On a control visit, they lay in a supine position for 40 minutes and on a final visit, they underwent a 40-minute sham therapeutic ultrasound program. This protocol involved application of ultrasound treatment to both legs, with the ultrasound machine turned off without the participant's knowledge. The goal of this treatment was to create a convincing sham that mimicked a treatment commonly used for therapeutic reasons. We then evaluated how people expected they would perform on an exercise protocol after receiving each intervention. Finally, we ran the participants through an incremental cycling protocol which required participants to complete as many three-minute bouts of cycling as they could, with the difficulty increasing each bout. By designing a study in this way, we really focus on two central questions related to the pre-exercise interventions. The first question we address is how do people think they will perform? To answer this question, participants were provided a visual analog scale. Participants could select where on this continuum they thought their performance would be compared to their control visit. After we had an idea of how the intervention affected how people expected they would perform, we answered a second question. How do people actually perform after each intervention? As previously discussed, we did this by having participants complete an incremental cycling test until complete exhaustion. As we discussed before, the goal of this study was to determine whether or not IPC improved performance and whether or not improvements were real ergogenic benefits or just placebo effects. If IPC does improve performance more than the sham and control treatments, we can give one of two explanations. If IPC is ergogenic, meaning it truly leads to improvement in performance due to some physiological effect, we would expect performance to improve independent of participants' expectation and only after the IPC intervention. If IPC impacts performance only through placebo effects, we would expect to see performance improvements after both the sham treatment and IPC and especially in people who had positive performance expectations after each intervention. Let's take a look at some of our results. This figure shows how participants expected perform following both the sham and IPC treatment compared to control. Positive value on the y-axis above the dotted line indicates an expectation that performance would be improved after the intervention, while a negative value indicates an expectation that performance would be negatively impacted after the intervention. As we can see, on average, participants expected that their performance would be improved following the sham treatment and negatively impacted following IPC. When we look at these figures, we can see the group and individual performances following each intervention. Since the protocol was done to complete exhaustion, time to failure indicates performance. As you can see, time to failure was greatest following IPC compared to both sham and control. 
Performance was not improved following the sham treatment compared to control. In other words, IPC positively impacted exercise performance while the sham treatment had no effect on performance. How do we interpret these results? Well, because of the fact that we saw IPC improve performance, despite the fact that participants expected it would actually be detrimental to their performance, we propose that IPC provides a true ergogenic benefit. In addition, sham had no effect on performance, despite participants' positive expectations. Although not the focus of this study, our results beg the question, how does IPC improve performance? From some of the data we collected, it seemed that IPC did not result in changes to metabolism, and it did not change the ratings of perceived exertion at submaximal intensities. It's possible that IPC improves tolerance to pain, which allowed participants to endure at maximal intensities for longer periods of time. This idea is supported by previous research that has shown that when IPC is performed prior to surgery, patients report lower ratings of pain during recovery. It's important to know that this is just a theory, and a future study would be needed to test if pain tolerance during exercise is affected by IPC. To summarize what we've talked about, IPC improved performance despite participants' expectation that performance would be negatively impacted by the intervention. At the same time, the sham protocol led participants to believe that their performance would be improved. However, performance was not different than control. With that, I would like to thank everyone who was involved in making this project a possibility. I hope you guys have enjoyed this knowledge translation video. Please look out for more knowledge translation videos from our lab in the future.